Hey, my name is Jonathan Clark. Thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to talk about a lav mic. It's the Pro 70 lav mic by Audio Technica. Um, the full full name of it is Lavalier mic or Lavalier mic, depending on where you're from, how you pronounce it. I know that if I use one or the other, some people are going to get stressed out, so I'm just going to try and call it a lav mic all the time. And basically, a lav, a lav mic is kind of like a lapel mic. And so this is the box it came in, and I'm going to quickly show you what it looks like, go over its features. I'm not going to do any comparison testing with other lav mics. You can find other videos on the internet that explain that on YouTube or whatever, but I am going to give you my own personal impressions about this. My goal in buying this one was to buy a mid-budget lav mic. I didn't want a really low-end one. I've had lots of experience buying cheap mics over the years and I almost always want to cringe that I spent the money on you know something really cheap and so I've always wanted to move up to a better quality. At the same point I don't uh, I don't even use the lav mic for my YouTube videos or anything like that so I only use it occasionally um, for interviews and stuff when I'm working with clients. I don't do any really big-end stuff with it So I didn't go for one of the high-end mics and you can spend easily a thousand dollars on a really nice lav mic But that was not necessary in my case um, This one was I think it was around hundred and seventy dollars Canadian so um, So what you get with it pretty simple you get a little carrying case that looks like a microphone case um, This is the main body of the unit so it's got a battery case and takes a single AA battery, which of course is 1.5 volts. And not much on it. Um, there's a belt clip, which is handy if you're putting it on the uh, interviewee's belt or your own belt if you're using it. Uh, this connection cord, which has the actual microphone end, uh, is permanently attached. We have a port here for XLR. And the XLR gold-plated receptacles, uh, or I should say prongs, I guess, and so that should keep them corrosion corrosion resistant. And at the other end, we have uh, on the side, we have the push button to open it, and we have an on-off switch. And there's two settings for on. There is the flat line, which has no low-cut filter and there is a low-cut filter setting. And if you understand low-cut filters, um, this one has an 8 decibel per octave drop-off starting at 80 decibels. Okay, so Audio-Technica Pro 70. And then what else do we get with it? Uh, we get a little windscreen head, kind of a mini pop filter, and so it just fits over top like that. And we have two mounts. The first one is for somebody who is using it in a vocal interview sort of setting. And so, you know, you could put it like this. They recommend about six, six inches below the chin is the optimum place to uh, put it. Now this is a cardioid microphone and so it picks up best from the front of the mic, which was in, on top in this position, not as much from the sides or below. So you want to have it actually pointing at the person's mouth. So on a shirt like this is good. Um, if you want to have it hidden, that's certainly not a problem. You can tuck it in. You know, there's different options for hiding it behind someone's collar. But the problem with all lav mics is, uh, and it's a big problem, is you got to be careful that clothing doesn't cover it because that mutes a lot of the sound and really gives you a poor sound. And you've also got to be careful that clothing doesn't rub against it, because just a little tiny rub like that, it sounds like Force 5 winds coming through. So you have to be careful. But I do like the little clip. Okay, and then besides the uh, clothing clip, we also have a uh, guitar mount clip. And so the way this one works is like this. And so I could take my guitar, and then I can fit this into the sound hole, something like that. You know, if I were to put it down here more, it would probably get in the way of where I'm strumming, so I have to be careful where I put it. I might want to put it on the high end, why not? Anyway, whatever happens to work, whichever feels most comfortable for the performer. 
And so basically that's all there is to it. Um, now as far as the specs, uh, cardioid microphone, um, the maximum sound pressure level it will take is 123 decibels. That's very loud. That's jet engine sort of loud. And so, well, a good rock concert, if you're too close to a speaker, you might get to that level. So you don't want to have it in a very, very loud environment in case you damage the microphone itself. Um, dynamic range is about 96 decibels. The signal to noise ratio is uh, 67 decibels. The output impedance, 200 ohms off battery or phantom power. Uh, yes. Okay, so obviously it's a condenser mic and it needs some sort of power. And so the 1.5 volt battery is one choice. And it says that a good quality fresh battery should last 1200 hours. That's, uh, that's a long time. But despite that, make sure you don't... See, look, I just did that. I left it on by mistake. Don't get in the habit of always checking it and making sure it's turned off before you set it down so you do have a battery available. Now, if you have phantom power coming off your mixing console or your soundboard or your interface, whatever, external sound card, if you've got phantom power, then it can draw power through your XLR cord. You do not need to have a battery even in it to get phantom power working. And then for phantom power, I think it's a huge range. I think it's uh, it takes anywhere from like 11, 11 to 51. 11 to 52 volts. So a lot of phantom power systems are 24 volt or 48 volt. So it'll work on either of those. Uh, frequency response, that's something important. Uh, they recommend, that, well, they say 100 hertz to 14,000 hertz. So you know that this, the, the human range of hearing for a really good uh, ear is from a low of 20 hertz up to a high of 20 kilohertz. So this does not go all the way down to the low, but if you're, uh, you know, the point of a lav mic is usually to record a person speaking or singing or an acoustic guitar uh, or occasionally some other types of instruments, but none of the instruments that you'll be recording with a lav mic and no human voices will really be down in that sub 100 hertz frequency. That's a very, very low end frequency. Um, I mean, there will be some, but it's not the not the part of uh, sound that comes out really obviously. Um, and for some vo people's voices, like there's almost nothing down that low. On the upper end, 14 kilohertz is the upper end for this. And of course, you know, a lot of good condenser microphones will go right up to 20 or more. But I don't see that being a big deal. Um, a lav mic is kind of a specialty application mic. It's not going to be something that you're going to use as the best choice for a mic if you can use any type of mic. It's a mic that you use when you're in a portable situation or when you don't want a mic visible right in front of somebody's face. So in those situations, you know, you have to live with a little bit of compromise. So going up to 14 kilohertz is, is not bad. And a lot of people, once they're in their 40s and onwards, um, human hearing d decreases very quickly as you get older in the trebles. So, you know, anyone who's in their 40s probably can't hear above 14 or 15 kilohertz anyway. So, not a big deal in my mind. Um, any other specs that matter? No. No, I think that's it. So, you know, I've, I've played with this quite a bit uh, in the recent past. It's not too old. I've only had it for a couple months, but I've been happy with it. So let's, uh, let's boot the computer up and let's do a very quick test and see what kind of capability it has. Okay, so let's do a quick test of the microphone. And so what I'll do is I'll test the guitar position first and then on my, uh, on my clothing for a vocal test. And I guess basically I'll leave the microphone on the camera running the entire time just to keep things simple, but I will play the recorded output from the microphone at the end. And so let's get it running. Oh, and I'll warn you too, this guitar is terrible. This is a pawn shop special. It's not in tune and it never can or will be. Uh, the G string will not tune. So please don't judge me on that or on my picking skills. Okay, so I'll just be quiet for five seconds. We'll see what sort of background noise we're getting.
Beautiful. Nothing, nothing visible registering. Okay, so let's see what it sounds like. Should be good. So let's take the mic off. That's going to be a little bit noisy, unfortunately. Apologize. Okay, and I will try reciting words from one of my own songs so there's no copyright issues. So this is goodbye. You knew that it was coming. It's not like I'm running without warning you at all. Okay, we'll stop that. Now, I had the output levels fairly low in that recording, so let's see if we can recover something useful uh, from all of that, okay? And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete a lot of that leading space. We don't need that, but I did leave a little bit of stuff here for a quick uh, noise sample. And up here we have, that's the part where I spoke and recited the words, so we'll get rid of the stuff after that we don't need. Uh, we don't need... We don't need all this stuff in between, so I will just delete that. So now all we have is a little bit of guitar work and me speaking at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by uh, tidying this up a little bit so it's easier to work with. Um, I'll start by raising the volume somewhat, and it looks like most of my stuff is, uh, there's not a whole lot of volume above the minus 12 mark here, so I'm going to do a tiny bit of compression uh, just to speed things up here. Um, we'll use 12 as a threshold, we'll really compress it hard, uh, we'll go say 4 to 1, and apply, okay, looks good. And I will also bump that up again, say another five decibels. Okay, so right now, what I'm going to do is, you know, I should have I should have played with my settings a little bit better beforehand, had a higher volume coming in, louder, hotter signal coming in. Um, but that's okay, because I kind of wanted to play with some uh, background noise here, and so I have another video, which you don't have to watch, but it shows what I've been doing for processing for the several microphone videos that I've recorded, including this one. And so basically what I'm doing is just going through and doing a noise sample, capturing a noise print, and doing a little bit of noise reduction, and then after that a tiny bit of EQing on my vocals. I don't necessarily know that I'll do that on the... yeah, maybe I will do it on the guitar and then a quick tiny bit of reverb. And we'll see what the output of it sounds like afterwards, because really what you're, what you're interested in is what it sounds like in the end. Okay, so I'm going to capture a noise print there. And like I say, the other video that I did uh, explains what I'm doing here, so I won't go into too much detail right now. Okay, that looks like that tidied up fairly well, and we will we'll put some. Uh, that's got a lot of low end. I perhaps could have used my low cut filter on the microphone itself, but I'm just going to do a generic um, bit of equalization. And now I have some spikes there that I'm a little nervous about, so I'm going to trim those down. No input boost at all. Let's just make sure those get cut off. Well, that didn't do anything. Zero. Oh, there we go. And I'm going to put a tiny bit of reverb on it. And I know this is kind of uh, this is kind of distorting the final sound. So if you're trying to figure out whether or not the mic sounds good. Well, this kind of colors it and doesn't really make it a good valid uh, 
point of reference for some people. But like I said, there's other videos on the internet that will do proper tests of this lav mic. I'm just interested in what it sounds like to me. And so now at this point, I'm just going to do one more final amplifications. Amplification. Okay, so let's see what it sounds like. This is goodbye. You knew that it was coming. It's not like I'm running without warning you at all. Okay. And so that's playing. You can hear that over the uh, camera's micro speakers microphone. So that gives you an idea of what it sounds like in the same environment as the live environment of recording. It's obviously more dull, and it doesn't help that we're going out of laptop speakers. That's a problem. But what I'm going to do right now, I'll play just the second half of the guitar and then my vocals. And this time I'm going to superimpose the actual processed file into the YouTube video. So, so it should sound a lot more clear to you this time. So this is goodbye. You knew that it was coming. It's not like I'm running without warning you at all. Okay, so that's all you get for uh, for that. Like I say, if you want to learn more about processing and stuff, I've got other videos. So, something I'm going to do too before I forget is I'm going to take the video, the the audio files that I just worked on here, and I'm going to save a couple different versions. Um, I'll just backtrack and do this. I'll do one called raw, I'll do one called noise reduction, I'll do one called EQ, and I'll do one called final. So four versions, and that'll give you the original files. I'll put them together in a, in a compressed file on my server, so you can download them if you want to listen to them on your own DAW, in good headphones, whatever, and just get a better sense of what it actually sounds like, because it's hard to tell from YouTube video. So the link to download those will be in the description underneath this YouTube video. So feel free to download them if you want. Okay, so let's move on. What's the takeaway message here? Uh, I think the takeaway message is that you can see after listening to this, this does not sound as good anywhere near as a normal, as some of the other um, condenser mics that you would use in a studio. So even even simple mid-range mics, which which I like, like the Spark and the Spark Digital, are going to sound a lot better than a lav mic any day of the week. But the problem is sometimes you can't use those other type of microphones effectively. You can't get them close enough to your subject during a video, and uh, or or they're you know somebody doing an interview in a large hall, uh, panel session, something like that and the audience does not want to see a bunch of mics up there on stage sticking in people's faces. So this is for specialty applications, and in those applications, if you don't have a huge budget to go with a really, really high-end one, I think you're going to be pretty happy with this one. Now, obviously, my sound quality in this case would have been much, much better if I had a higher input level from the start. There'd be less background noise, it would be more clear and you know start with good materials to start with good raw materials because that makes a world of difference in your final sound and if you're doing a live environment you're not going to be able to do any processing so not this kind of processing now you might have the signal going into your board but before the board you might be able to put a real physical compressor in place to make sure that you've got some volume leveling happening and then you might also be able to either use your EQ knobs on the board or a dedicated, like a full, um, say, 32 band or 20 band equalizer or something like that and get a much better sound out of it. And you might be able to put a real reverb unit there too. Okay, but 
anyway, that's how this mic works, and that's how lav mics work in general. So thanks for tuning in. And if you do want to watch some of my other videos, I've got lots of other videos about reviews of gear, um, lots of DJing, audio production, music, that sort of stuff. Go to my website, djbolivia.ca slash videos. Um, I'll put the link here. You can just click on it. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in.